Hey everybody, welcome back. Another episode of Mart's Weld Shop here. Today I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be just farting around here in the shop. Um, just kind of pulling my hair out with this rear end of this Dodge thing. I'm having troubles. And when I cut it down, it's still gonna be like 60 inches wide. And I can't drill the six lugs out to a five lug because every time you spin it, there's part of a hole. Yeah, it's just, if I could get maybe a five lug Dodge rear end, but I gotta call some factory. I don't know. I don't wanna spend a million dollars on this thing and still have it be a turd. So, I don't know. I had a guy interested in it, so I'm gonna see if he's still interested in that rear end and I'm just gonna wipe my hands clean and make some room in this garage. Yeah, there's just stuff. Again, it's just, keep adding up and I can't handle it. It's blowing my mind i don't know so the jegsters they sell a like a yukon or a eaton one of them traction lock thingies it's like 420 bucks so i might sell this thing cut my losses on it put that in here and then i'll narrow this 8.8 .8 rear end and I already got the shackles, and it'll work. They're three and a half, I know, and this is three inch, but it's fine, it'll be fine. So, I might just narrow this, center this rear end up in here, like it's supposed to be, and then that'll narrow up in here. Because right now, she's got all kinds of room, guys. I mean, we've, we've got boat loads in here. That's like six inches, because you gotta have a wheel spacer with this Ford to Chevy wheel thing. And I would like to have Chevy wheels, so I don't know if I can still run the wheel spacer once it comes in, however far it's got to come in. But yeah, I'm, I'm real happy about tearing this back out of here and dumping the new fluid that I just put in there and the bearings that I wasted on the original carrier, you know I mean? But I still got new wheel bearings and seals on the outsides and on the pinions, so yeah, whatever. I can just transfer the ring gear to the new one. I could save a little cash there, maybe. It's probably gonna explode. I don't know. I don't want to spend two grand on nine inch. I don't. I don't. So, well, anyways, today I'm kind of washing my hands clean of all that garbage today. So I got my dash up here, and even this is it's giving me giving me problems so I got cracks you know there's cracks in it guys and this one here I took my little uh I was trying to say last time was Dremel tool my hobby the hobby Dremel tool not die grinder whatever the heck I called it last time but yeah you got one of these little uh where's the camera one of them kind of bits in there and I'm kind of zing zanging these cracks out because I'm gonna go find some filler fill these cracks in and hopefully uh, paint it or flock it or whatever, I don't know. But it's got my brain. I, tr I tried making an aluminum dash a couple weeks ago and I, I messed it up because I didn't measure right. So I went in the dumpster. Hours, guys, hours of my life. So I'm gonna try and fix a couple cracks on here and get this thing looking decent enough to put it in there. And I mean, I don't even know if these gauges are gonna work. I don't know, I had the wire harness out trying to make something out of something. And I don't even know if that's the correct wire harness for this dash. I mean, if this truck's an 85, I don't think this dash is an 85. Maybe it is, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Can anybody tell if this is an 85 dash? It seems like the 92-ish one, I don't know. But man, the wires, guys, there's just, there's so much stuff, and where does it go? Nothing's labeled. Nobody knows where it plugs in. It doesn't look like it plugs into the steering column anywhere, so I gotta do some kind of like race car wire in. I never did all that before. I mean, I had an old 50 Chevy that had like three wires in it that wasn't stock. I messed with that, and it didn't burn down, but I don't know. And then even the harness on the outside, I had that out yesterday, because I was gonna 
I, I wanted to put both of the harnesses in, you know, in this, in this big hole over here. But that's got a lot of wires too. And I was watching other guys on, on the youth bulbs, you know, trying to, yeah, I cut this and they're just snipping that and snipping this. And I'm like, it doesn't even make sense because of the inside part. I want to know that the inside part is okay then I can connect it to the outside part and make sure that things are going to work. I don't know. And oh, I'm looking at these painless things and they're three, four hundred dollars and oh, the brain guys, the brain is on overload meltdown mode. So yeah, I'm just going to grind out some of these cracks today just to make myself happy like I did something. I spent hours in here yesterday, guys, hours. And you know what I got done? I was out here hours with these wire harnesses cleaning the mud it's just that north dakota montana orange mud whatever that was this thing was under water i think um yeah so what i got done yesterday right here oh and i mean because this door was just flopping before i got this in Hours got five hours or so, six hours I was out here. I was in meltdown mode. So then I was gonna put the window in, you know, because S10 can. Found the window somewhere under his bed or whatever. I don't know. Um, I was gonna put that in, get this kind of buttoned up here, you know, and get the carpet back in and stuff like that. But I got the old, uh, cranky mechanism that's in the window with the arm on it that pushes the window up but the problem is the window is missing I don't know if you can see this or not but yeah probably not. there's a hole here and a hole here there's supposed to be a metal bracket going across these two holes a little channel for the wheel that's on the end of the arm on the cranky thing that makes it go up and down. Well, yeah, well, I'm missing that metally piece. So I could put the window in. Now, I'd like to go to the junkyard today, but yesterday there were monsoons here in Wisconsin. Monsoons, I'm not even kidding. It rained for hours, like, over it was coming over my my gutters over the gutters i was out there in the rain on my ladder gonna get hit by lightning taking all these the buds and baby helicopters from everything making dams stuff running over i was soaked plus i was sour from this thing it wasn't a good day so yeah we just got a lot of things that are going down the old hole. And it's taking its toll on me, guys. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. And I, I wanted to go get my engine today. Get that over here. But as you can see, I got zero, zero rooms. And I don't want to have another thing. Say, I'm not going to work. And that on top of the pile. That's that's where I'm at. So, I'm going to cut some of these cracks out of here. And maybe I'll go to the store and get some kind of bondo -y stuff that'll crack out like the first day the sun hits it. And uh, wreck my work and my hours of work that I put in. So, other than that, I mean, I'm going to make a pattern too to get the shape of the bottom here. So if I find a nice piece of stainless at work, I ain't using aluminum anymore. That stuff is too hard to work with, guys. The grinding, the, it doesn't cut where the poop. It's just, it's just not fun. 
So the stainless, it's nice and thin. Yeah, it'll be a little heavier, whatever. But at least you can sand it, make it look nice, and it'll stay that way. And yeah, you know, just make something that shape on the back, and then straight on the front, and put some gauges in there. Maybe we'll do the race car wiring thing. I don't know. I have no idea yet. So that's where we're at. So I'm gonna get into this, cut some cracks out, and uh, waste a day. Big Al's coming over, my daughter's boyfriend, and he's got the day off of work. Well, he was there early, so. But he's gonna come over, hang out with me, whatever. Might like we get some stuff for this, and uh, yeah. Alrighty, we got some of these ground out here. Just try to make them deep enough, you know, for uh, whatever, I don't know. They make some padded dash bondo, but is it really gonna work any better than anything else? I mean, they got some of this here, shorthand, tiger hair, green, hard. This stuff gets hard, guys. So if you're going to use that stuff, you got to make sure you get it on almost perfect because sanding that later when you put it on in the sun is a really, really bad idea. Yeah, I've done it. It's harder than hard can be. So you got to make sure you get that stuff in there and manipulate it when it's manipulable if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah, that stuff can be a stinker. If you've ever used it, but I don't know. Maybe we'll try some regular crap, but you know, regular bond will just probably fall out anyways. The whole thing's gonna fall out, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'll get back to you when I get some garbage in there maybe. And I'll try and do it quick and as precisely as possible. And then if I can flock over that to kind of hide it, that's all we need guys. We just need it to hold up and look good until I break it when I put it in. So we're going to go to the store, grab some of that garbage. Well, I got this garbage, but I need a uh, hardener. Because imagine that, my hardener's all toast. So if it ain't one thing, it's another, guys. That's how it is here in the real shop, you know. It's, it's how it is. So we're going to make do. So went to the store, got me some hardener stuff and uh got debris in my eye I was blowing the stuff out didn't have my spectacles on wouldn't you know it right in the eyeball well, anyways so i just cleaned my cracks and uh wouldn't you know it i open up the old uh the stuff it might be crap but we're gonna try it anyways She's about half full. I haven't used it in a couple years. Whatever. We're going to try it. It's going to work. It's still moist. So, yeah. We're going to throw some on. Give her a shot. See what it does. That's all we can do. That's all we can do, guys. And make sure when you're at the store, don't get yourself one of them plastic things. Use cardboard. You know, spread the, the mud, the fiberglass, the whatever you want to put in there. RTV. That's what I should have used. You know, I ain't scaling all this stuff to precise measurements and weights. No, I'm just going to throw some in there and I'm going to put it in as quick as I can and ruin this. Okay. That's how we do it here. Got time for that. Chip Goose, Goose, Flip, Goose, whatever his name is. Ooh, that was, that was a lot. Get yourself a nice spreading board, you know, like I got here. At least I got a bench. We'll mix her back into shape, you know. We'll just use this pad here. We'll just we'll give her a nice clean fold for a nice precise edge. Double her up. We're gonna kind of jam her 
jam her down in there, guys. You know, we're gonna try and jam her in. You know, I'll kind of do this, try to do this one handed. Gonna jam her in. Get some stuff in there. Might have to come by with a little skim coat later. Just make sure you get all this other crap off that you don't want there. Less sanding the better, fellas. Oh, that was not the trick right there. Yeah, just use your finger, guys. Probably better. What did I get myself into? Plastic thingy would have helped. Primity. No, just have to make some more. And I made a huge mess out of this, guys. This is just, I don't know. And my hands. You look those guy. Ain't got any, okay? Hey, wait. Mama actually bought something the other day for her. Where's she? She'd be doing this stuff. Anyways. Got some uh, light sanding to do. Try and make as less work as possible here for you. Because like I said, this stuff gets super hard and it's hard to work with. So I'm kind of flattening out some stuff right now you kind of want to work with it when it's a little bit soft but sandable if that makes any sense i don't really care about this it's like a corner just gotta look somewhat decent you know maybe the flocking stuff will hide most of this i don't know maybe you can just paint it with some kind of textury something the stuff off your fingers before it stays there forever but, yeah we'll get back to you when we start sanding on this also guys when you're at the store make sure make sure that you forget sandpaper just yeah just i'm sorry this this is how it is you go to the store 20 times every time you try to do something that's just the way it is this is the behind the scenes of the big shops you know they don't tell you none of this stuff but i ain't going back to the store so i'm using an old grinder disc <laughs> anyways i got some of this here kind of worked down got a little low spot there we gotta fill yet but it should work the old corner corner's turning out pretty good right there where is it a little hole in the end but like I said, maybe the flocking will take care of that. And we'll kind of give her another little thin skim coat. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get the rest of this done and then add another coat to it. All right, guys, nice day, welcome back. We got the uh, dash as far as I'm gonna go with it here. It's crude. I don't care. I'm gonna go over it. Some bed liner. Probably the wrong idea, but it's textured, so that's what we're looking for. Hide some of this fiberglass that I put in here. So, and we got our taped up. As much as we're gonna go, it's good. We took everything apart. So, uh, yeah. We're gonna hit her with this stuff and hopefully it works. We cleaned her up with some brake clean. Some of that there, monkey business. So here we go.
All right, we let this thing sit for some hours today. I probably did it at about, I don't even remember, nine in the morning. Now it's like seven at night. It's kind of dryish. Yeah, but she gave her the old textured look, like the bed liner stuff, you know? Um, I got her all back together. I don't know if you remember this glove door here, glove box door was gray and it had black gooey gack all over it so I was like yeah we're gonna paint the whole thing so you got that back in there got this back in there tape these off I ended up taking this whole contraption right out of there it's got bolts down in the holes here and ended up taking the instrument cluster out too that's all separate clean the inside of this here glass plastic glass, fake glass. There's bugs in there and stuff, so you gotta get that out. Well, anyways, if my wiring harness and this here doesn't work out, we're just gonna unbolt this situation and just make a flat piece of something, stainless or whatever, and we'll put some gauges in there. Just regular ones, regular gauges. And then we'll keep the, the standard dash here, so. Turned out pretty good. Looks pretty good. See, we had some black on here too, so I didn't, I didn't do anything with painting uh, the dash for this bezel part, but this all turned out pretty good where my fiberglass was. You can't tell where any of it was, so that's what we were looking for. Seems like it's gonna hold up. I don't know if you can hit it with a hammer or nothing like that, but. Um, yeah, the corner here, this was blown off. I had to remake that, so. It looks pretty good for uh, whatever. 12 bucks for that can of paint and another four bucks for some brake clean. You could probably use something else, some alcohol or whatever to clean that off. But yeah, kinda, kinda happy with this because I did not wanna try and formulate another aluminum style dash for this thing because the first one I messed up my brain I thought I had it right nope so I went right in the dumpster hours of my life so now we got this here we got the wire harness kind of sitting in there and I got the uh, the fuse box bolted into the corner so that's it right here. And I'm not gonna put the outside one on yet. I got it all. I started cleaning it up. And uh, that one's a little more straightforward than this inside one, because I don't know if that's the same year, because it seems like it's missing some plugs and stuff. So, I don't know. I seen one in the junkyard the other day, so I might go check that one. I'll see if the harness is still in it. And maybe make some kind of heads or tails out of that. Um, I don't remember the year of that one, so. But we still gotta steal some. I might steal a bumper off it. It had a couple nice parts on it yet, and I still need that piece for the window. So, grab some parts off of that and see if I can make any sense of that. But I think, I'm pretty sure most of the dash was gone, so I don't know if that's gonna help me or not, or if I can just see what that wire harness looks like, and maybe that one will plug in because there's something on the steering column. There's like two big connectors and only one looks like it plugs into this harness. So I don't know what's going on. Guys, this was a basket case when I got it. So I didn't take it apart and it's loads of fun. Just trying to figure out what went where. Like this steering column, I don't, it wasn't from this truck. So it's a different year at least, or I don't know. I just seen a guy on the YouTubes and I seen his, he was painting the firewall. So I seen the, uh, his, his bolting situation here. He had a bolt up here where I don't have one. So I don't know why they would change that in these square body S10s when they only ran them for what, 10, 12 years. Why would you change it? I don't know. 
Yeah, so I don't know if this column is a different year from the harness, I don't know. But it's, it's being a holdup and I don't wanna throw this dash in there until I get these wires to where they gotta be kind of ran or if I'm gonna buy some aftermarket painless or hot wire kit or haywire, that's what it's called, haywire. I don't know, who knows, so. We'll keep you informed like normal. So, guys, hit the like button. It helps out. It helps. Hit the like button. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. You know, help the channel grow. Help us get moving here. We'd appreciate it. And thank you for watching another episode of Mars Culture.